Hello, everybody. Once again, we're going to hit you up with another presidential election. This one, the election of 1924. Three-way race here, you guys. So let's see who's going to come out on top right now. Now we're going to start off with the incumbent party, and that's the Republicans. Um, the incumbent president, Calvin Coolidge of Massachusetts. He was vice president under Warren G. Harding. But when Harding dies on August 2nd, 1923... Coolidge ascends to the presidency and he puts himself up for nomination for a full term in 1924. But he's facing some opposition. California Senator Hiram Johnson, Wisconsin Senator Robert M. LaFollette Sr., and the governor of Illinois, Frank O. Loudon. At the end of the day, it is going to be Coolidge who receives the nomination for a full term and he's going to bring along for the ride Charles G. Dawes of Illinois as his running mate. Now, a substitute platform at the Republican National Convention was presented by Wisconsin progressives, which caught a moral tone, um, but the other Republicans have failed to embody this tone, and the platform was defeated. So La Follette and his supporters bolt the Republican Party and they form the new progressive party. Now we have now since we have the Republican ticket of Coolidge and Dawes, let's get to that new progressive party. Now this new progressive party forming in 1924, um, they will nominate Robert M. LaFollette Sr. as their presidential candidate. And he's going to bring along for the ride Burton K. Wheeler, senator, uh, senator from Montana, as his running mate. Now, LaFollette's health wasn't all that great. He was ill from pneumonia, um, and he was absent from his desk in the Senate um, for most of the spring. But he was still a formidable contender despite all that. Drawing on a variety of this contents, he can injure the cause of either major party in sections it can ill afford to lose. The long appeal to the farmer in the party platform suggested his major target, but the candidate was addressing every American. In his acceptance speech, LaFalla urged that military spending be curtailed and soldiers' bonuses paid. Um, at the foundation of LaFalla's program was an attack on monopolies, which he demanded should be, quote, crushed. Now, his socialist supporters took this as an attack on the capitalistic system in general, but his non-socialist supporters, including Lafayette himself, um, believed this encroached on personal liberty. So it signified a revival of the policy of trust busting, and the trust busting policy made famous by Teddy Roosevelt. Um, Lafollette also called for government ownership of water power and gradual nationalization of the railroads. He also supported nationalization of cigarette factories and other large industries, um, increased taxation on the wealthy, and the right of collective bargaining for factory workers. Now, William Foster, a major figure within the Communist Party, um, considered Lafollette a hopeless reactionary who wanted to break up monopolies and return to an era of small businesses. Now that we have our progressive ticket of LaFalla and Wheeler, let's go to the Democrats. Now the Democrats are putting up their own slate of candidates. California's William G. McAdoo, the governor of New York, Al Smith, and Alabama Senator Oscar Underwood, but the convention gets a little bit cray cray and it takes 103 ballots, 103 ballots, before they chose a compromise candidate in John W. Davis of West Virginia. Um, Davis was a conservative Democrat, and this led many liberals within the party to bolt the party and support LaFollette's campaign. Davis is going to bring along for the ride Charles W. Bryan, the governor of Nebraska, as his running mate. Charles W. Bryan is the brother of William Jennings Bryan, who, as you will recall, was nominated by the Democrats three times for president. Now, before we get into the campaign, 
um, the Harding administration, it was revealed um, after Harding's death that it was racked with scandal. It was racked with scandal, and the most notable of those scandals was the Teapot Dome scandal. Um, Harding's Secretary of the Interior, Albert B. Fall, um, was accused of taking bribes for oil reserves at Teapot Dome, Wyoming. He was eventually convicted for this, and he became the first cabinet member in American history to be convicted of a felony. In other words, to go to prison for a crime. Now that we have our Republican ticket, Coolidge Dawes, our progressive ticket, La Follette Wheeler, and our Democratic ticket, Davis and Bryan, let's head on into the campaign. Let's see who's going to win this thing. Now the Democrats were divided pretty badly as a result of the Democratic National Convention. As you will recall, um, liberal Democrats weren't too happy that Davis received the nomination because he was a conservative, so they bolted the party and supported La Follette. Also, the economy was booming in 1924. Um, the United States had returned to a period of isolationism, and after a brief period of craziness in 1919, the economy begins to boom. This is called the Roaring Twenties. Um, people began to buy things on credit. Um, going in the debt was more acceptable than it was in the past. But this economic prosperity and this overproduction and things of that nature is a bad omen for things to come. And now also, um, there was no visible crises abroad. After the Treaty of Versailles was rejected and the United States didn't join the League of Nations, um, the United States entered a period of isolationism, which they would be in until our involvement in the Second World War. So there was little doubt that Coolidge would win the election. Um, his campaign slogan was Keep Cool with Coolidge, um, and this was pretty popular with the American people. So, with that in mind, let's get to the results and let's see who wins this thing. Now, before we get to the numbers, I want to make it known that this is the first presidential election in which all American citizens, all American Indians, were recognized as citizens and therefore allowed to vote. Um, the Indian Citizenship Act of 1924. Um, was signed the law by President Coolidge, and this gave citizenship to all Native Americans. So now Native Americans um, are finally allowed to vote in this election. So the 1920s, a real big decade for voting rights, first with women with the 19th, with the 19th Amendment, and then with Native Americans and gaining citizenship, they're now able to vote in presidential elections and the total vote ends up increasing to 2.3 million because of the great drawing power of the Follett candidacy but both Republican and Democratic totals um, were less largely because no oh, never mind um, the total vote increased to 2.3 million um, because of the great drawing power of the LaFalla candidacy, but because of that, both Republican and Democratic totals were less. So let's go on ahead and get to the numbers. Calvin Coolidge and the Republicans are going to win a full term in office, going to win 382 electoral votes. Davis and the Democrats are going to win 136 electoral votes, while LaFalla and the Progressives received 13. Um, 35 states are going to end up voting for Coolidge and the Republicans. 12 states are going to end up voting for Davis and the Democrats. Aside from carrying Oklahoma, Davis' support does not leave that solid South, much like James M. Cox in 1920. And the fall and the progressives are only going to pick up Wisconsin. Now, in terms of the popular vote, it's 54% for Coolidge, 28.8% 
for John W. Davis and 16.6% for La Follette. Now Coolidge is not going to run for a second full term in 1928, which leaves us with a whole new slate of candidates trying to vie for the White House. And we'll talk about that next time in the election of 1928. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, go ahead and watch those if you want. And with that, we will see you next time.